Hey look, hello. I'm making this video to show you how to teach or how I teach basic facts. So for like three plus seven, I like the kids to use their fingers, to learn how to use their fingers properly. It's, you have 10 fingers, so it's like the perfect thing to use because you always have them, you can't lose them. And you, um, uh, you want the child to start thinking in terms of fives and tens so that later they can go 5, 10, 15, 20, or 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40. You know, it helps. It's very helpful to think and get that child to start thinking in terms of tens. So, for 7 plus, seven plus 3, I tell them to hold up the biggest number, 7. Hold up the, that many fingers. Well, that right there is going to usually cause a problem because usually a child, depending on how small they are, will go like this for 7. They'll go 4, 5, 6, and they'll go like this. Well, that's not how I want them to hold up 7 fingers. That's the first thing I test. I'll say, hold up 7 fingers, and then I'll watch to see how they do it. If they do it like this, then I teach them how to hold up 7 fingers. Not like this, but I want them to hold up you know, fill this hand first. There's five fingers here, six, seven. I want them to do that. Why? Because I want them to think in terms of fives, fives, then tens, you know, hit, hit marks, just like counting back money. When you count back money, you want to hit those benchmarks like 25, 50, 75. So we want to hit the 10 mark, the five mark and the 10 marks. So hold up seven fingers. You teach them how to do this instead of this. Okay, so they got up seven fingers. And then I teach them, you know, to add three fingers. One, two, three, and then the answer is ten. Now, what's interesting is, if you tell them to, depending on how old the child is, and I've seen even fourth and fifth graders do this, if you, if, say you're doing six plus four, and I'll say, hold up, okay, hold up six fingers, and they'll do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have to stop. I'll grab their hand and say, wait, how many fingers do you have on one hand? I'll say five. I'll say, so why did you count them? One, two, three, four, five. You knew there's five. Just say five, six. And, and that teaches them also how to, you know, I don't know why they do that. They, they know there's five fingers on there, but you teach them that they don't have to count them each time to just go five, six, and it makes it quicker. And then you do all the ten combinations first. Get those down. Five plus five. Six plus four. Seven plus three. In fact... I would have the child every single day write down, I would just say, get a piece of paper and write down the five facts that add up to 10. And so they would do this, you know, 9 plus 1, 8 plus 2, 7 plus 3, 6 plus 4, and 5 plus 5. Every day, once a day, and then put equal 10, have them put equal 10. And that just means that, you know, you've got to get those 10s in their brain. So now if we're going above um, 10 for Five plus eight, I always hold up the biggest number, eight. Okay, there's eight. Instead of going five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they're gonna go five, six, seven, eight. Then you wanna add five more, you're gonna run out of fingers. So I always give them a glove. So there's eight, nine, ten, and then you've got the glove to count them. Now, as far as like memorizing facts, I don't have the child memorize the facts because your memory can fail you. And, and if they memorize them and then they're taking a test and they need to know eight plus five and they're like, oh, I forget what eight plus five is. Well, they've got their fingers. They can, you know, if you teach them this way, they can count them. It's always there. And eventually, like eventually they'll learn the facts. But as far as learning the facts, like quick, 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 you know, I don't think that's actually a good thing because you're just teaching them to rely on memory. When you do this, they start to see patterns. Oh, eight, eight plus, eight plus five more, and they say, well, there's two of them, and it was five, so there's three more, and they can, they can visualize it in their brain to see the other three. It just starts to teach them... Uh, it teaches them something that memorization doesn't. It teaches them to see the numbers and the tens and you know what's left over. And I just think it makes them smarter in math in the long run instead of memorizing. The memorizing child might look smarter and quicker, you know, and faster, but the child that's doing it with their fingers is actually getting a better picture in their brain of what the numbers are doing. 
That's my opinion anyway. That's how I taught my child. And then when I do uh, subtracting, for that, now eight take away six. I don't know if it's backwards, but eight, looks weird on there. Eight take away six. Okay, so for eight take away six, and I've had seriously some eighth graders that didn't know how to do that on their fingers. So you teach them to uh, say the smallest number, six, make a fist, touch your chest and say six, and count up. Six, seven, eight, two, six, eight, take away six is two. Now, why do you make a fist and touch your chest? And I'll show you why. Because, let's do, let's do 12 take away nine. I've seen this over and over and over. Kids, if they count up, they'll say nine, 10, 11, 12, four. No, and that's why I tell them to make a fist and touch their chest. Nine, because that way they can't have any fingers coming up. Nine, 10, 11, 12, three. 15 take away 8. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 7. And eventually, as they do these over and over, they're going to memorize them anyway. But I like them to count, do the counting and see it. It's just so much quicker. And then, and it gives them a, a system to rely on no matter what, no matter how if their memory fails them. And then for the multiplication facts, I had my child write down all the, like 1 times 1, two times two, and write the answers, of course. Three times three, all the way down to nine times nine and 10 times 10. Once a day, every day. And here's what you do if they don't know the answer. Do you teach them to memorize it? I don't, I don't want them to memorize it. Well, I guess I do eventually. But actually, I want them to develop a, this particular method. This method is the best method, I'm telling you. For six times six, now, I know it's very popular in the elementary grades now to make these arrays, you know, a six by six array, and then you can see them and count them. I just think that's not good. The best way is to write, if they're stuck and they don't know six times six, first of all, um, okay, let's, let's go back. First of all, the first thing I ask a child is three times four. And if they know it and say 12, I say, good. Now, what does three times four mean? And most kids cannot answer that question. They don't even know what it means. They know it's 12, but they have no idea what it means. So that's my first question. Three times four is 12. What does it mean? It means three, three times four means three fours. One, two, three, all added up. So, and I, so when they come to six times six, what does it mean? It means six sixes, one, two, three, four, five, six, all added up. Now, when I teach them, they, you think, oh, that take forever. No, it doesn't, because then I teach them, this is what I make them do, count down five sixes, one, two, three, four, five, and draw a line, okay? And then, that, that's five sixes. Five sixes is easy to do because, let me show you this, six times five is the same as five times six. And eventually I make the child tell me that. Five times six and six times, or six times five or five times six. So we're gonna go with six fives. It's six fives and then you count by fives on your fingers. Okay, six fives, here's six, six fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Boom, you've got that answer. And you put it right here on the line. There's. Them. There's 30, and then one more six added on to that, 36. Very quick. And teaches them what five times six means, and it gives them a method that if their memory fails them on a test or wherever, they've got a method to get it quickly. And eventually they'll start to, just in their head, they don't have to write the sixes down. Eventually, it takes like maybe months. But eventually, they're gonna see, well, five sixes is 30, 36, or they'll memorize it themselves. So when they're doing, now I do teach them a trick. Now, I don't teach them this trick until later, but at first I make them write for eight times eight, I make them write down eight eights, do the same thing. Let me just do it real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count down five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Draw a big line. Then I ask them, what's that, what's that mean? And they'll say, well, it either means five times eight or eight times five. 
and we're gonna do eight fives. So you hold up eight fingers, and you count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So you get 40, you write 40 on the line, and then you have that. Oh, another eight would be 48. Write that on your line. Oh, another eight would be, what, 56? And then, that's an eight. And then one more eight would be 64. After they do that for, I don't know, a month every day. I do this every day. All the one through ten every day. And then eventually, then I tell them that I ate and I ate till I was sick on the floor. Eight times eight is sixty-four. And even though you tell them that once, I mean, they forget it. You have to tell them again. But still, it's a very helpful little hint. So anyway, that's how I do the, yeah, I did that one. So anyway, that's how I do my basic facts.